So I brought my Wicatec Stormfire out with me today so that I could do some demonstrations and cook my lunch. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I'd just like to thank the good people at Wicca Technology for sending me the Stormfire so that I could share it with you. So this video is a follow-up to one I released just a little while ago that I did at home and demonstrated all the key features for the Stormfire, and that was just in advance of the opening of the Kickstarter campaign. Well, the Kickstarter campaign is still going on, and I'll speak more to that in a moment. But at the end of that video, I said the next thing I was going to do was come out and do some demonstrations for you. So that's what we're going to do today. So my plan is, is to demonstrate the stove using it with alcohol, specifically my Trangia stove. I'm going to use it with wood pellets. And then of course, I'm going to use it with wood. And I'm going to use all three of these to cook while well, make a cup of tea and then cook my lunch. I am going to be highlighting those key features again during the demonstration so that you'll see it. I am not going to go over the stove in detail with all the measurements and everything else because of course I did that in that original video. Of course I'll link that video to this one so you can go back if you're interested in that information. All right let's get started. All right I was asked by one of my viewers in the last video if I would show how to assemble the storm fire. I hesitated doing this only because I have videos on the Flex Fire 4, the Flex Fire 6 and the Light Fire all from Wicked Technologies and the assembly is identical. In fact I think I stated that many of the parts are interchangeable and I brought a few of those accessories from the other stoves with me today so I could demonstrate them with the storm fire. But I will go over its assembly very quickly but not in a lot of detail. So here's the package that my stove arrived in from Wicatec. And inside these are the components that came with it. This is the fuel port cover, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Two pot stands. The four sides to the stove and two more components, the fire grate and the ash pan. So the four components of the stove can be identified. Number one, this is the last plate you're going to put on when you assemble the stove. This is the front of the stove with the feed port, so that's easy enough to identify. Let's put that aside. The first one you're going to start with is the back plate, and that's also easily identifiable because there's instructions and warnings and laser engraved on the outside of the back plate, so you can differentiate it from the two side plates. Now, it really doesn't matter which way you use it. This is just my personal thing. Uh, once I start using the stove, I like to use it with all of the dirty side faced in. You know, if I turned it around, it's not a bad thing either, but that's just the way I like to assemble it. So when I do that, it does mean there is an order to putting it together. So I can take a side plate, and in this case, it will be this side plate. And yes, it is, of course. That's what I mean about once you des decide there's an order to it that you uh, tend to go back with that order. You put the two side plates on like that. And now the next thing you're going to do is grab your fire grate. And you can see this open space right here. That's where the ash pan drops in and it drops in so easily. That's why you do it after you do the fire grate. But just above that is a set of slots. There are three on the sides I mentioned in the other video. The lower set of slots is where you're going to insert the fire grate and ha hold it together like this on both sides. Now, working the ash pan in is just a matter of kind of a little bit of opening the sides up just enough to drop it into place like that, and you're just about finished. And the last thing is the front cover, and the front cover does slide right down. Occasionally, it'll take a little bit of jiggling as you line up all four tabs, but you can see how easily it does go together. And one caution I'll give you right now, I did this in all the other videos as well, is picking this up when it is empty or loaded, not necessarily while there's a fire in it, everything is done from the back plate. Grab it from the back plate. Don't grab it from the front plate. It'll open up and fall apart on you. That's kind of what locks it together. But if you grab it from the back plate, it's going to hold together just fine. Now you can move this around 
when there's a fire in it. And I've demonstrated that in the other video by using the two pot, st pot supports. There are slots on either side, which are going to feature into this in a moment for the use with the Transgia, Transgia. but you can pick the stove up and use and move it if you have to. Of course, if you've done a good job of finding the right site and preparing it, then you shouldn't have to move it, but you know, occasionally it does have to move. So those are the two pot supports. They can be used in cross fashion on the top, or they can be used in parallel fashion as well. You can see that it can come apart if you're not careful. There, it's back in place. You can run them in parallel fashion, which is what I prefer to do when using the Trangia, which is the next step. And the final thing that you can install, and this is one of the key features for this stove, is the fuel port cover. It drops right into place, prevents heat loss out through, prevents losing pellets if you're going to use it in pellet mode, as I'll demonstrate, and it forces the chimney to, uh, or more of a chimney effect for the heat to generate up through, and it prevents any wind robbing heat away, especially if you're using an alcohol stove. All right, now, now I'll set it up for use with a Trangia. And again, as I mentioned in the preview video, the Stormfire was designed specifically to maximize use with an alcohol stove. It was the Trangia they designed it around, but it will work with any alcohol stove that will fit in the stove or fit inside the body of it, as I'll demonstrate now. In order to make this work effectively, the people at Wicatech added an extra slot that was not in their other designs. And it's that extra slot that we're going to make use of right now. So I start by removing, removing the front plate temporarily. I'll take out the fire grate. I'm going to raise it to the center slot, bring it back together, put the fire grate back on. And now when I drop the Trangia into the stove, it rests at a perfect pot gap, or at least what I consider to be a perfect pot gap of uh, 1.25 inches. I just had to quickly get my notes off because I've wrote notes off because I wrote this down. So to the top of the stove from the top of the Trangier now is 1.25 inches. And for me, that's the sweet spot for using it with uh, an alco this alcohol stove. Now, this is where the fuel port cover comes in because when I close that off, the stove or the alcohol burner is completely encased inside of the stove and will not be affected by wind from any sides, but there's still just enough airflow all the way around the top that it vents sufficiently if you put a pot on that completely covers the top then you won't lose any heat and you won't smother your alcohol stove out. If you want, you can use the two pot uh, supports, especially if you're using something that's smaller than the top. And you can set them in the low position because they do have the different slot heights. And now within in the low position, you really, it's only about a 30 seconds of an inch, but just enough that you get that little bit more, maybe ventilation around the top of the stove. But more importantly, now I can put a smaller uh, pot on, like maybe a 750 milliliter titanium pot of some type, or a GSI pot, they'll both fit on top without uh, worried about them dropping in. So that's one set up for alcohol. Let me demonstrate another. Removing the front plate, taking the Trangia out. Now I am going to put the front plate back on. You'll notice I didn't put anything inside in terms of plates. Not necessary, but you know, you can if you want. It's just, uh, you can do it without, just for the purpose of the demonstration at least. On the sides of the stoves, right here and here, are slots, and they're identical slots on the other side as well. And what I'll be doing is I'll be running my pot supports through and dropping them into place. Just a little bit of jiggling to get them through. Run the other one through. And now I can drop my Trangier, my burner, back in, and it is held in place by those two pot, su pot supports run through. And when you do that, the pot gap now from the top of the burner to the bottom of your pot is going to be three quarters of an inch. Now, I know most people consider that to be too short a pot gap, but I'll, I'll tell you from experience, 
it will work just fine. It just means it'll be a little longer before your water comes to a boil. So if you want to use it this way and maybe you're not in a rush and you like the fact that you're saving some fuel because it's going a little slower, this works just fine as an alternative for use with the alcohol stove. The only thing I'll say now, of course, is you've committed your two pop supports to uh, supporting the stove and you won't have anything to support a small uh, pot on top. All right, there is one more setup. Let me demonstrate that now. Start by taking these out and they can be a little fiddly. As you can see, there we go, that's better. All right, I'm removing the, fr the front cover and I have to reach over because I have an, an optional plate that I brought with me that I've used in other demonstrations. And this is an accessory that you can purchase from uh, Wicatech to use with alcohol stoves. And in this case, what I'll be doing is opening the stove up. This will go into the top slot. Again, put the front cover back on or the front plate. Drop it into place. Now I can drop my alcohol stove in. You can see it sets inside of that ring perfectly. And when you do this, once again, you have a 1.25 inch pot gap between the trangia and the bottom of your pot. So that is three ways that you can set the storm fire up with an alcohol stove. All right, let's move on and demonstrate that in use. So I'll pour some alcohol into my burner maybe a little bit more than half an ounce. I'll ignite it. It is gonna take a second to bloom. I can see the shimmering, so even though I can't see the flames, I can see the shimmering, so I know that it did ignite. Now you really don't have to wait for that to come to a bloom. You can put your pot on right away, which is what I will do. But if I want to put the fuel pour cover on, and then I have to put the pot on, or put the uh, it on before I put the pot. So I'll demonstrate doing that. Very easy. Drops into place like that. My Uberlieben Kessel titanium version. There we go. It's on perfectly. Nice and stable. All completely protected from the wind, but yet still sufficient ventilation around the outside that it won't smother off the alcohol stove. All I got to do now is wait a few minutes until it comes to a boil, and then I can enjoy myself a cup of tea. Once I've had my tea, we'll start lunch. All right, so we're moving on to the first or the next test, which is with wood pellets. And this will allow me to also cook the first part of the meal I'm making today. So I have reconfigured the stove to have the pellet plate and it installed. And the pellet plate is in the center of the three slots. Now, normally you would look at that and think that if I pour pellets in, that they're just going to come tumbling out through the fuel port. And you would be right, except this is where... The fuel port cover once again comes into play and prevents me from losing my pellets. So I have just over a cup of pellets here, I believe. These are hardwood pellets. I'm gonna pour those in. Of course, I over poured and dropped some out the side. So this is not a lot of pellets. The stove can handle much more than this, but this is all I am going to need. I don't know if I can show you that or not. Can, can you see that? Yeah, all right, good. Uh, this is all I'm going to need for the next portion of the meal, which is frying up some bacon. To get it going, hand sanitizer. So there's lots of this around the house today. Hand sanitizer is the cheapest and easiest to use to get pellets going. You can use alcohol, of course, but this is, I'm just going to mix it around a little bit. Not that that's necessary, but here we go, I think. Yes, there is heat. Once again, when you're using alcohol, you can't see it in the strong sunlight. So now there's really nothing else to do except wait for a few minutes, and I'll bring you back when the pellets are well engaged. I may as well set my crossbars on now, and I'm going to give them a little bit of height. Again, not that it needs it, but this will just allow a little extra ventilation and a little bit, for me, a little bit of control of heat. So you can see I've had the pot stands up at their highest off of the sides. I'll bring it back when the pellets are well engaged and I'm going to start frying up some bacon.
All right, maybe three minutes, four minutes after I lit the alcohol, the sand sanitizer on top of the pellets. The pellets are well engaged. I think we're ready now. We can go on to the next step, which of course is frying up some bacon. Yeah, the smell of bacon cooking in the woods on a beautiful early spring day. Okay, I think my bacon is ready. Pan is quite hot, but the bacon is crisped up. Uh, some brown spots, but that's okay. Still just a little tiny bit of flex in the bacon, the way I like it, it's not falling apart. I'll take the bacon off, put that in my plate, and you can see that the pellets are still going strong in the stove. All right, so the storm fire is cooled off after using the wood pellets. I took it apart and put it back in the standard way in which you would normally use it for wood, which is with the fire grate in the lowest slot the ash pan, you can see, is floating freely in the slot where it's supposed to go. So this, if I just wanted a quick fire of wood, is exactly how I'd use it. But now if I want to slow the burn down so that I retain some good coals and embers for grilling, then what I want to try and do is raise the ash pan and cut off some. Now, not all, but some of the airflow. So raising the ash pan does not cut it all off. In order to do that, uh, we slide these in. I'm going to see if I can show this occurring. So we slide the bars in and through, and there are little tiny notches. I think they show up right here. And the notches in the pot, uh, the pot stands will rotate into place and to hold this up. And it's one of the shallower notches, these little tiny notches, same on both sides for that matter. All right, so we can do exactly the same on the other side. Slide it through, line it up, and rotate the pot stand, or the uh, ash plate, into place. So there is a small gap, about a sixteenth of an inch opening right there between the ash plate and the fire grate, and that's true around all four sides. And you would think, that's not going to be enough airflow for a fire. But it is, trust me, as I'll demonstrate shortly. Uh, shortly. Now, the other thing I want to point out is I could do this while the fire is burning in the stove, but of course it is much, much riskier. So my recommendation is to, if you're go going to use the stove to grill and you want those coals, set it up before you get your fire going. Trust me, it will work. There is sufficient airflow as I'll demonstrate now. So what I'll do is return the stove to the fire pit. I'll get a fire started in it. Once the fire is going and I have quite a few bigger pieces of wood in it, I'll put the fuel port cover on and then we'll just have to wait a few minutes for it to come down to grilling coals. Let that get going. Huh? Get it lit properly though. There we go. Let that get started in the stove. I might add one more piece on top of that. I have little tiny pine twigs that I'm going to put in first. These are the little pencil lead size ones. And then I'll work my way up through the pencil size twigs and eventually onto my full size hardwood fuel, the, the right size for grilling, creating grilling coals. Look at that, nice airflow, right? Look at that. So as I mentioned as I assembled the stove, that it works just fine with the ash pan lifted. You do not have to worry about not having enough airflow from the bottom. Now, I do this with dry wood. Uh, if I was doing it, if my wood was damp, I would want maximum airflow to get maximum amount of heat. But my wood is dry. I looked around for dry sticks on the ground. It'll be a little slower taking off, but it's taking off as you can see. And being a little bit slower, I may just uh, cut away for a few minutes until I have, actually I think I can probably go right ahead now, add a few more of these tiny twigs. 
put one or two pieces of heavy wood on and just let the fire get going. That's all you can do is just wait it out at this point. Or I think I've uh, got enough small twigs in there. This looks like maple. Yes, this is maple. I have maple, birch, and a little bit of oak here. Okay, that's good sized chunks of wood, but that's what you want if you want to get some good grilling coals. You don't want wood that's going to uh, burn up so quickly that it turns to ash before you have any coals left. So you can see my fire is taking off quite well. It's just a matter of waiting now for a few minutes. And uh, when the, I have a good bed of coals, I'll bring you back and we'll start the next process of making lunch. All right, let me cast a little shadow over the fire. Can you see the coals, the hot coals inside there? There's still a little bit of active flame, but there is, I don't know, two, three inches of glowing embers of coals down inside. There's a couple pieces of wood that are still lit up, but uh, they're, they're starting to die down. There, it's died down enough that I can go on to the next phase of cooking, which is, first off, I'm going to reinstall the fuel port cover. Did I get that on? Not quite right. There we go. It's on now. And then I can put my grill on. And this is an accessory grill that is sold by Wicatech. For that, I'm going to put gloves on, though. And uh, give that a second for the, for the grill to get a little warm before I throw the hamburger on. There are notches in the top of the stove that accept the grill so that it stays in place and doesn't move around. So there's still a little bit of flame there, but if I am cautious and keep the burger moving, uh, at least until it starts dripping fat, and then of course it'll, it'll really start to flare up. But uh, once again, if I keep it moving, it should be okay. So there is my burger going on to the grill. That's a good sized burger and it just fits on the grill, just big enough for one person. And it is sizzling. So, all right, so there's nothing more to see at this point because I'm just going to have to keep flipping the burger over and over to make sure it doesn't burn, doesn't stick, doesn't get too charred. And uh, then we'll bring it back. All right, a few closing thoughts on the storm fire from Wicca Technologies. So today I made three demonstrations for you. First, I showed you how it can be set up three different ways with an alcohol stove like a Trangia. I then went into uh, using wood pellets. And if there was one accessory I'd recommend you purchase for the stove before you look at any of the others, that would be it, is the wood pellet grate because it works so well, as you saw in the demonstration. And when the wood pellets have finally burned out, I loaded the stove up but not before raising the ash pan using the the pot, uh, pot supports to lift it up into that raised position so that I could slow down the airflow going into the stove and therefore generate more coals and embers as the fire burnt down and it did that exactly as designed and when that when the fire had burnt down sufficiently then I put a grill on top another accessory that if you want to have then it works very well you don't have to have that you can use any other grill for that matter but then I was able to successfully and very deliciously grill up a beautiful hamburger so three demonstrations of how you can use use the Stormfire from Wicca Technologies. Now, as I mentioned, just a few closing words. In my original video, I had said that the Kickstarter had started and that you would want to get involved with it, and you still can. There is still time for you to be involved in the Kickstarter. There are some good deals to be had, and I know that the introduction of the Stormfire comes right on the heels of another stove of almost of the same size, but I would hate for you to miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of that Kickfire, or I'd feel negligent if I at least didn't remind you that the Kickstarter is going on because there, the engineering, the design, the manufacturing of this and all the unique features that this stove has really make it something that you'll want to consider. Now, the one thing I know people will say, well, it's one of those put together or puzzle stoves. That is true. If there is one thing about the stove that most, some people will find a bit of a put off is the fact that you have to assemble the stove. It just doesn't fold open. 
but you watched me do it. How easy is it? It is not a challenging thing to do. And it gives you the options of using all the components that are available for the other stoves, being the FlexFire 4 and the LightFire, also from Weka Tech. So uh, do take another look at the Kickstarter. The link will be in this video description. Let me know if you do go over to the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, I'd be interested in knowing if anybody purchases it. I'm just curious because um, I find that there's not enough people, at least in North America, taking advantage of this stove. I mean, listen, after the flames went out, I was able to reach in, grab it with my gloves, turn it upside down, dump out what was left of the embers, and there weren't a whole lot. I left it there for two minutes at the most. The stove was cold. That's because of the titanium stainless steel uh, alloy that's used in this stove. It just cools off faster, just like a pure titanium stove does. Okay, that's all I'll say about the stove. If you want to know more about this in detail, then the link to the video I did, the preview video, will be at the end of this video. If you have any questions or any comments on the light or the storm fire, then please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.